Welcome everybody. A very special welcome to our YouTube family, to the readers and promoters of the Curate's Diary and to those involved in God's Cottage. I remember your intentions every day in Mass. Special thanks to those of you who give the videos the thumbs up and those who place their comments on their need and very especially those who send on links to my videos to other people Deeply appreciated. This Sunday we have a guest speaker for the opening of the Life and the Spirit Seminars in God's Cottage, Noel Burden from Rateau, who has an internationally known ministry, especially in the area of healing. I invite you to join with me in praying that in our Life and the Spirit Seminars in God's Cottage, we will truly come under the power of the Holy Spirit. The grace for each of us to become open to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In some ways, what I'm speaking about today does not appear related to the life in the Spirit, but yet, when one looks closer, it is very much related to the life in the Spirit. Because sadly, there are people in our church who do not speak the truth, and the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. There are people in our church who are leading people astray, who are being very vehement, who have no hesitation in twisting the facts in order to suit their own agenda. They are doing great damage both within the church and above all to those who are misfortunate enough to become their followers. On May the 13th, very special feast day of Our Lady of Fatima, which was made it very dear to me that had happened on that day, Pope Francis met President Zelensky. I will invite you first of all to look at the photograph of them greeting each other because that's going to become very important. I want you to look carefully at that photograph and see if you can see even the tiniest speck of displeasure on Pope Francis's face as he greets President Zelensky. Look, see if you can see even the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest speck of disapproval of President Zelensky on Pope Francis's face. They greeted each other warmly. Thank you for this visit, a smiling Pope Francis said. As he warmly, recorded he warmly shook hands with President Zelensky. And President Zelensky replied something to the effect, holding his hand on his heart, he replied something to the effect that was a great honour to meet Pope Francis. In a tweet after the 40-minute audience, President Zelensky expressed gratitude to Pope Francis for his, for his personal attention to the tragedy of millions of Ukrainians. And he said he had spoke with the pontiff about the tens of thousands of deported Ukrainian children. We must make every effort to return them home. And that appears to be one of the chief things that President Zelensky asked of Pope Francis. To do anything he possibly could for the return of the thousands, the tens of thousands of Ukrainian children that Russia has stolen. Imagine that. Russia has stolen so many things, but amongst what they have stolen is a countless number, tens of thousands of Ukrainian children and brought them off to various distant parts of Russia to raise them as Russians. Even from tiny babies, up to school going children. Any children they could get their hands on, they stole. If they didn't kill them, they stole them. And this is a source of great grief to the Ukrainian people. There is a Ukrainian artist called Oletsky Ravika. No, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his name correctly. But something like that. Oletsky uh, Ravika. He originally comes from Melitopol. As you probably know, Russia captured Melitopol and that would be one of the districts from which uh, thousands of children were stolen and sent off to far distant parts of Russia. And he has 
several paintings depicting the war from the Ukrainian point of view, depicting the Ukrainians' experience of the war. And one piece which I found quite moving. I myself found it quite moving, and I'm a Christian. I absolutely love the Lord. Let no man attempt to say that I do not know love the Lord. But one uh, painting that I found quite moving was a painting of our Blessed Mother, but with the child Jesus, a sort of blacked out, only a silhouette of the child Jesus in, in the painting. So it's an icon of our Blessed Mother grieving for our missing children. And naturally, given that our Blessed Mother is grieving for the missing children, she is not presented in the icon with the most pleasant of appearances as we sometimes see her in many other icons. She is grieving, as she does, as she does. Our Blessed Mother grieves for the Ukrainian children that have been stolen. She also grieves for all the children who have been aborted. The painting which uh, Oleksiy Ravika painted of our Blessed Mother grieving for the missing children of Ukraine could equally be used as a painting for the missing children that have been killed through abortion. But President Zelensky brought a copy of that painting with him. Naturally, I was delighted that Pope Francis and President Zelensky had met. Thank God for that. I was delighted to hear that President Zelensky had brought an icon involving our Blessed Mother with him. I was delighted that it was on May the 13th, the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima, that they met. I saw it as a very good sign. And then, a few days later, an honest, innocent person sent me the links to an outrageous attack, both on President Zelensky and on the image he brought, an outrageous attack by none other than Dr. Taylor Marshall. Let us look first at the title of Dr. Marshall's live stream. A double battle title. Zelensky blacks out Jesus an icon. Zelensky did not black out Jesus. He brought an icon that had been painted by Alexei Ravika. It was Alexei Ravika, the artist, who created this image and to imply uh, that President Zelensky did so. Line number one. He can't even get past the title of his video without indulging in a falsehood. He can't even get past the title of his video without making a false claim. That was President Zelensky that had blacked out the image of Jesus. And the second part of the title offends Pope Francis and Christians. Now on what basis does he claim that Pope Francis was offended? Is he so close to Pope Francis that he's able to speak for him? Those of you who are familiar with his channel, would you suggest that? That Dr. Taylor Marshall is so close to Pope Francis that he's in a position to speak for him? I don't think so. Note also how in the thumbnail he has Pope Francis crying. Imagine that. Dr. Taylor Marshall presents us with an image of uh, Pope Francis crying. Now, those of you who know anything about the history of our church in recent years will know that there is one group of people who have caused Pope Francis immense grief, and it's not President Zelensky. There is one group of people, he sometimes calls them rigid, <clears throat> but they certainly have caused him great upset. And I do believe that Dr. Taylor Marshall is a member of that group who have caused immense grief. 
So if Dr. Taylor Marshall wishes to imply that Pope Francis is weeping, then I say to him, if he's weeping, it's because of you and people like you. Tell you what, I'm really worked up today. Really ticked. President Zelensky of Ukraine met with Pope Francis and gave him a gift. It's an icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with a blacked out silhouette of our Lord and Savior, the eternal Logos, King of the Jews, Jesus Christ. Look at this. This is what President Zelensky gave to the Pope. This is a picture of the icon. A, let's just look at Let's just look at the Blessed Mother and how she's depicted here. It's not flattering. It's not good. This is not quality. I'm offended by it. Firstly, do note we are looking not at the picture itself, but at a photograph of it, which may well be a poorly taken photograph. It seems to me it's quite likely a poorly taken photograph. And secondly, this is our Blessed Mother grieving her children. This is our Blessed Mother grieving all the children that have been stolen out of Ukraine. Is she meant to be looking as if she's thrilled by the fact that all the children have been stolen out of Ukraine? Dr. Taylor Marshall says, I'm offended by it. I, I see a great trend of people saying that in America recently. I'm offended by what you say. I'm offended by what you do. A pastor gave um, a homily based on 1 Corinthians uh, 13, that, that beautiful chapter about love. And a bloke came up to him after the service was over, gave him a thump in the chest and said, I'm offended by you reading that passage of the Bible. Well, Dr. Taylor Marshall, if you're offended by that image, I say, hard look. And then let's focus on, of course, Our Lady says to us, do whatever you will. Our Lady is the shortest, safest, fastest way to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says Our Lady is the surest and fastest and safest way to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It would appear to me, Dr. Marshall, you still have not found the safest and fastest way to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The safest way to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, is to repent of your sins. And it appears to me you have still a long way to go before you begin to repent of your sins. So until you repent of your sins, I don't care how much you turn to our Blessed Mother. I don't care how many Hail Marys you say. Until you repent of your sins, you're just not going to make it in terms of a living relationship with Jesus Christ. And Jesus is blacked out. He's gone. This is highly offensive to the Pope. This is highly offensive to all Catholics. It's highly offensive to all Christians. Dr. Taylor Marshall claims to be able to speak for the Pope, saying that the icon was highly offensive to him. He also says it's highly offensive to all Catholics. Well, actually, Dr. Marshall, I'm a Catholic and I'm not one bit offended by it. I think it's a profound image, a profound image that could be used not just of all the missing, the all the stolen children of Ukraine, but a profound image that could be used uh, for all the, the children that have been lost through abortion and in various other circumstances. I think it's a profound image. You may be offended by it, but I am certainly not offended by it, not the least bit. And I think I'm every bit as much a Catholic as you are. And what is more, you have absolutely no right to speak on my behalf. No right to speak on my behalf. Zelensky is Jewish. And this is a... to the followers of Jesus Christ. Now I know... Zelensky, when he met with Pope Francis, here it is. Oh, by the way, Zelensky's wearing a sweatsuit to meet the Pope. Hey, Pope Francis. Uh, yeah, I'm just rocking my, my sweats like I rolled out of bed. Completely disrespectful. Compl I know this is, his, this is his, his vibe. You know, he likes to roll in the sweats. 
Dr. Terrell Marshall, with no mention of the fact that this icon was not painted by, by President Zelensky, makes a great play of the fact that President Zelensky is a Jew. Well, actually, Dr. Marshall, in case it ha happens that you don't realize it, Jesus also was a Jew. And the only slap in the face I get is from people like yourself who indulge in all sorts of hate speech based on people's nationality. Dr. Taylor Marshall belittles how President Zelensky is dressed. I certainly do not see anything immodest in the way in which President Zelensky is dressed. I am also deeply conscious he's coming from a war zone. I am also deeply conscious that this is exactly how he is dressed when he's meeting all the world leaders. And I greatly doubt that Pope Francis would be wanting him to dress up in some sort of a suit just for to meet him when he meets all the other world leaders dressed as he is there. And note how uh, Dr. Taylor Marshall puts all the emphasis on how President Zelensky is dressed. No mention of the obvious warmth of the greeting between the two men. No mention of how President Zelensky is placing his hand to his heart as he says how honoured he is to meet Pope Francis. No mention of the smile on Pope Francis's face. Once again I ask you, can you see on Pope Francis's face even the slightest sign of disapproval of the way in which President Zelensky is dressed? He says to Pope Francis, well, the reason that Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings is blacked out is because that signifies all the Ukrainian children. That's highly offensive to Christians. Yes, Zelensky of Ukraine, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, let the little ones come unto me. He said, you must become like unto a child in order to enter into the kingdom of God. He also says things like, when you feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty and clothe the naked and visit the imprisoned, you're doing all those things to me. So we know that our Lord Jesus Christ identifies himself with the little ones in the kingdom of God. And that when we do acts of charity, as in assisting children, Ukrainian children, Nigerian children, Mexican children, American children, we are doing those things unto Jesus Christ. That is Christian theology, that is basic New Testament 101. Once again, Dr. Taylor Marshall misrepresents the truth. The blacked out image of Jesus is not representing all the Ukrainian children. It's representing the tens of thousands of Ukrainian children that have been stolen. There is a difference. He then says it's highly offensive to Christians. Well, again, Dr. Marshall, I believe I'm as much a Christian as you are. There is a difference. I seek to live by the teaching of Jesus as I find it in the New Testament. I see evidence that you don't seem to seek to live by the teaching of Jesus as one finds it in the New Testament. And I am not one bit offended by that image. I am, in fact, profoundly moved by the image. The image of our Blessed Mother mourning the children that have been stolen, the tens of thousands of children that have been stolen. I think it's a profound image for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Dr. Taylor Marshall left out one significant little bit of what Jesus actually said at the great judgment scene. Those were about to be told that their destination was eternal hell. We'll say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go into eternal punishment. They will go into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. 
and people like Dr. Taylor Marshall who seek to find ways of avoiding facing up to what's happening in Ukraine, who seek to find ways of justifying even what's happening in Ukraine, who seek to find ways of saying we should ignore what's happening in, Ju in Ukraine, we should get on with our lives. People like Dr. Taylor Marshall should really listen to those words. He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go away to eternal punishment. Eternal punishment. What is blasphemous and sacrilegious is modifying, modifying the canons of Christian iconography. I have here the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And I challenge Dr. Taylor Marshall to produce from the Catechism of the Catholic Church his so-called canons of Catholic iconography. They're not in it. There is a section on art in it. There is a section about the importance of art representing truth and art representing beauty. But I challenge him to produce from it uh, his so-called canons of Catholic iconography. These images, this image, by the way, goes back to an icon that we, tr we Catholics believe was painted by St. Luke. There are many editions of it. It's hard to know if the real one still exists. You can't just as a Jewish person come in and black out baby Jesus and give it as a gift to the Pope. Supreme Pontiff, Vicar of Christ, reputed to be the pastor of pastors and the servants of servants of all Christians. Here he is, look. I'm sure the Pope was like, what in the world? There he goes again. You can't just as a Jewish com person come in and black out baby Jesus. As if it was President Zelensky himself who painted the icon. Despite the fact that the icon was not painted by President Zelensky. The, the, the icon in question is a copy of an icon painted by Oleski Ravika a Ukrainian artist. So once again, we see the complete misrepresentation of the truth. How long would it have taken any person of reason, reasonable intelligence to have called up on the internet who it was that painted this image? Would it have taken 30 seconds? It didn't take me 30 seconds to call up who painted the image. And the painter of the image is Oleski Ravika not President Zelensky. It's a great sin against the commandment that thou you shall not bear false witness to claim that there's something sinister because of President Zelensky being a Jew and that in some way it was he who painted the image. A grave sin. Grave sin. But the question is, could it happen that it's not really the image, that it's not really the icon? that has Dr. Taylor Marshall so riled up. Could it be that there's another reason, a deeper reason? We've got to call it out. I am so sick of this Zelensky trotting around the world asking for all of our tax money to run a proxy war. Now the truth comes out, doesn't it? When Dr. Taylor Marshall says, I am so sick of this Zelensky. I am so sick, he says. Well, sorry, Dr. Taylor Marshall, I recognise that you are sick. You are sick. There's no doubt about that. You are spiritually sick. It's not President Zelensky that's the cause of your spiritual sickness. It's the fact that you have not faced up to the things that you need to face in your own mind and in your own heart. That's the reason you're so sick. This is basically a proxy war with NATO and Russia. Let us be quite clear. NATO did not invade Ukraine. NATO did not invade Russia. There is only one country that did the invading, and that is Russia. And one would think, given how traditionalist you are, 
that you would be aware that when our Blessed Mother came to Fatima to warn about uh, what would happen in the world, she named one country. She did not name NATO. She did not name Ukraine. She did not name America. She named Russia. And she warned of the consequences if there wasn't adequate prayers for the conversion of Russia. I'll tell you what, if I was the President of the United States and Zelensky gave me that, I mean, it'd, it'd be bad news. I, I would lose it. I would totally lose it if that happened. And I would rebuke him in front of the whole world. How dare you black out Jesus with a diplomatic gift, especially to the Pope? Come on. Actually, Dr. Marshall, I see you're running to be president and ex-president of America. Best of luck to you. But I'm, thank I'm thanking God that you're not president of America. The reason is you have already lost it. You speak about how you would lose it if President Zelensky gave you that gift. You have already lost it, man. You have already lost it. Was this an innocent mistake? Was like, I know. Let's take one of the most holy icons that are revered by Christians and let's black out Jesus on it and give it to the Pope. That would be awesome. Christians are going to like that and it's going to really mean a lot to the Pope. Or was this sort of a, <laughs> this is going to be epic when I drop this. Talk about trolling the Catholic Church. As you said, Dr. Marshall, you lost it. And every time you open your mouth, you prove even more that you have lost it. It's just totally alien to you to acknowledge the tens of thousands of Ukrainian children that have been kidnapped, have been stolen, have been taken away from their families, taken away to a foreign land. It's just not in your heart to be able to acknowledge it. And because of that, it's not in your heart to be able to acknowledge that this particular painting showing our Blessed Mother grieving for the missing children is we can say whether it's a particularly good painting or not a particularly good painting, that's okay, that's okay. Not every painting is a particularly well done painting and we haven't seen the real thing, we've only seen the um, photographs of it which may be poor quality photographs that you have produced but it's a profound message. Our Blessed Mother grieving and it's not just for the lost children of Ukraine once one gets that message into one's mind and one's heart, one can, can think of our Blessed Mother grieving for all the aborted children and grieving for all the other suffering children throughout the world. But of course, Dr. Marshall, uh, concepts like that just do not enter your heart. Just beautiful. Here's a, here's a Ukrainian icon right here. I believe this is Ukrainian. This is, this is what we Catholics believe in Zelensky. And get your nasty mitts off of our iconic tradition. Is that not hate speech? This is what we Catholics believe in Zelensky. Get your nasty mitts off our iconic tradition. Dr. Taylor Marshall, I am a Catholic. But I am a Catholic who is prepared to enter into the grief of the Ukrainian people including their grief that tens of thousands of their children have been stolen. And I look to a Blessed Mother, who also is grieving with me. I have no doubt but that our Blessed Mother is grieving with me. You may not be grieving, Dr. Marshall. Clearly you're not grieving. I suspect that there's some reason why you're not grieving, but you're not grieving. And you can come out with all the mealy-mouthed phrases you like about love and peace and all the rest of it. But the fact is, t tens of thousands of Ukrainian children have been stolen and it does not concern you. When did this happen, people are asking? I pull up the article. It uh, looks like May 17th. That's today. Of course, they're much earlier than we are in Rome from here in America. When asked, when did it happen? He had to pull up an article. He didn't even know. He's ranting on about something and he doesn't even know when it happened. It happened on May the 13th, the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. 
a very symbolic day for um, President Zelensky to be bringing that image to, to, to Rome, to the Pope. Dr. Taylor Marshall is ranting on and he doesn't even know the day. And what is more, it turns out, since he thinks it's the same day as he's ranting on, what does that say about the amount of time he spent in prayer and reflection before he started his rant? What it says to me is, he entered his rant without even taking any time for prayer and reflection. And he is the man who is now trying to promote himself to be the next president of the United States. Thank God he hasn't a chance whatsoever. But here is a very interesting little detail. Yesterday on which um, Dr. Taylor Marshall went on his rant, it was none other than the day that the TASS news agency, the Russian TASS news agency, produced an article about President Zelensky's visit to Pope Francis. The very day, the 17th of May, the very day, the very same day that the Russian um, TASS news agency produced their report on the visit. And guess what? The Russian TASS news agency used many of the same words and many of the same sentiments as Dr. Taylor Marshall is using. Now, I don't know whether there's a connection. All I know is that it was on the same day, the 17th of May, when the Russian, the TASS Russian news agency produced this uh, report claiming that po uh, President Zelensky had offended Pope Francis, that Dr. Taylor Marshall went on his rant claiming uh, that President Zelensky had offended Pope Francis. Bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Shannon says, why would you expect anything different? Won't let Christians in his own country worship. I don't understand why the whole world's liking this guy. And yes, I'm not going to pretend, I know it's politically incorrect to talk about these things, but I'm not, I'm not going to pretend that we don't know. Zelensky is not Eastern Orthodox. He's not Ukrainian Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox. He's not Roman Catholic. He is Jewish. Let us be quite clear about it. 500 churches and places of worship in Ukraine have been destroyed or severely damaged by not Ukraine, but by Russia. And several priests have been killed by Russia. It is worth reading the story of the, the priest who describes himself as the grave digger of Bucha. After the Russians invaded, Russians killed his friend, a priest. This particular priest realized that the only way he could save, safely stay with his people in Bucha was by pretending to be the grave digger. And so posing as the grave digger, he ended up staying on in Bucha until it was liberated, being there for the people in their time of need. But that is what the Ukrainian Christians have faced. And any attempt to claim that the Ukrainian government has come down on Christians is absolutely false. Absolutely false. Yes, there are different churches in Ukraine. There is the Catholic Church, Eastern Rite. There is the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. And then there's the Russian Orthodox Church, amongst others. And elements of the Russian Orthodox Church under Patriot Kirill, have aided and abetted the invasion of Ukraine. And one cannot blame the Ukrainian government for dealing with those who are aiding in abetting the invaders of their country. Major Archbishop Sviatoslav Chevchuk, again, forgive my pronunciations, but he is the head of the Ukrainian Catholic Church. And amongst the many, many things he has said recently, I think he, he gives a talk every single day for his suffering people. And I can tell you, 
I can tell you he has never said a word of criticism about President Zelensky. Dr. Taylor Marshall may be full of criticism of President Zelensky, but I can tell you the leaders of the Church, of the Catholic Church in Ukraine, are not full of criticism of him. But Archbishop Chepnok said, I am proud of my bishops, priests, monks and nuns who have seen Christ present in those people wounded by the war. We truly have met the living Christ in those who are hungry, without a home, without anything. And do you think that Archbishop Chefknuk would have any difficulty appreciating the icon that Olesky Ravika painted? I don't think so. Do you think he'd appreciate what Dr. Taylor Marshall has said about the pa the, this painting of our Blessed Mother grieving for the lost children? I don't think so. It's anti, this is anti-Christian. And we're just calling out that which is anti-Christian. If you black out baby Jesus on an icon, that's anti-Christian. And you should be called out for that. You should be held accountable for that, Mr. Sweater Man, Mr. Sweatshirt, Zelensky. We're not just going to sit here and be quiet. Is Dr. Taylor Marshall operating on the basis that if you tell a lie often enough, you will get people to believe it? It seems like that to me. He just keeps repeating the same lie. That, that was President Zelensky that painted this painting. This painting was painted by one of Ukraine's most famous artists. I can't say whether it's a brilliant painting. I haven't even seen the original. And people have likes and dislikes where paintings are concerned. But this painting was painted by one of Ukraine's most famous artists, Oleski Raviki. And he's almost certainly a Christian. And do note how Dr. Taylor Marshall always intertwines falsehoods with, with denigrating uh, the person he's speaking about, with a hate speech in other words. He continuously intertwines falsehoods and hate speech. And his comments about President Zelensky uh, constitutes hate speech. Dave says he's laughing with his friends about all of this right now. I suspect that. He's like, can you believe we just trolled the Pope? Uh -huh. Rita says he's a puppet. He's told what to do. It is all scripted. He was an actor. It's true. Zelensky was an actor. On TV. He's a professional actor. More hate speech, more stirring up of, of prejudice. Is Dr. Taylor Marshall capable of opening his mouth without indulging either in falsehoods or in hate speech, one or the other, or both? And I think all Catholics, all Catholics who say, Zelensky, you got to apologize. You got you to gotta say you did wrong. We don't accept that. You can't come over to us, beg us for money, and then spit on an icon of Jesus. You can't do that. Not allowed. Definitely not allowed. More hate speech, more falsehoods. The only person that I see spitting on an icon is Dr. Taylor Marshall. Spitting continuously on an icon that was painted by one of the leading artists in Ukraine, who is almost certainly a Christian. And President Zelensky did not go to meet Pope Francis to ask for money. He went to meet Pope Francis to, to talk in particular about the stolen children of Ukraine and to seek the assistance of Pope Francis in seeking to be able to get the return of the stolen children of Ukraine. Baby Jesus is blacked out. Gone. Look at the art there. It's not good art. You know, this is not, I mean, I, I have seen teenage iconographers who make art that's like 30 times better than this. You know, stuff that looks beautiful, that captures the heart, that draws you to heaven, opens your heart to Jesus and Mary, leads you into holy thoughts, purity, grace, faith, hope, charity. That's, this is what we want right here. 
If the icons you love have so opened your heart to Jesus and Mary, one question, why don't you begin to live by the teaching of Jesus? This, just compare them. This was painted by someone who loves God, the good, the true, and the beautiful. This was produced by Zelensky. It's ugly, it's blasphemous, it's sacrilege. It's not good, it's not true, it's not beautiful. And you can't black out Jesus, Zelensky, to make a political point about Ukrainian children. How many times has Dr. Taylor Marshall falsely claimed that this painting was produced by President Zelensky? I promise you, use 10 seconds on the internet, 30 seconds at the most, and you will find who painted this painting. Oleski Ravika, who comes from Melitopol, occupied Melitopol, who most likely has children, relatives' children, friends' children, that have been stolen by Russia. That's who painted it. And as to the quality, don't be 100% sure that what we are seeing is the actual fullness of the quality of the painting. What we are seeing is a picture, and sometimes pictures fall very short. I don't know, but what we're seeing is a picture, and one should keep an open mind. But again, remember, this is not meant to be our Blessed Mother rejoicing in heaven as many of the icons are. This is our Blessed Mother grieving for the stolen children, as she is grieving for her stolen children, her stolen children. She is our mother. She is mother to the children that have been stolen, and she is grieving. Sacrilege is sacrilege. Zelensky needs to apologize, and the Pope needs, I'm thinking that's supposed to be to give him an exorcism. Agreed and agreed. So Dr. Taylor Marshall agrees that with the, with the viewer who claims that President Zelensky needs an exorcism. One only needs an exorcism if one is possessed by demons. In other words, Dr. Taylor Marshall, the great Christian that he is, is claiming that President Zelensky is possessed by demons. That's what he's saying. You have it there. And you can see, if you, if you go in on his video, you can see the comments that he has resulted from his video. All the people who are claiming that President Zelensky is the Antichrist. Again, actually, this is the same type of thing that we saw in Russia, where propaganda was used and used and used to stir up the people until the day came when it seemed totally right to invade Ukraine, when it seemed totally right to destroy the Ukrainian cities and to destroy the Ukrainian people, when it seemed totally right to kill as many as they could kill, to steal children wherever they could steal them. That's what you get where you have people stirring up falsehoods and false propaganda and stirring people up to hatred. And it seems to me that Dr. Taylor Marshall is every bit as adept at it as the propagandists in Russia. This person says, Bev, Zelensky is not a good person. He doesn't care about the people in Ukraine. He's in it with all the other adversaries on the government. People feel sorry for him. Not a good thing. He is in with the Biden regime that is crooked. People, you know, I started saying some of these things like, what's going on? You know, What's the real story here? And it just seems that this is a proxy war that is set up by the world leaders to get money. It's a money-making scheme. It's a grift war. And people are dying over it. So Dr. Taylor Marshall claims that the war is a money-making exercise. God love him. Is he deluded? Is he even mentally sound, claiming that the war is a money-making exercise? Who is making the money out of the war? And then further on, he announces his intention to run to be the President of America. Would you really like to have Dr. Taylor Marshall 
in charge of the nuclear weapons? I don't think I would. However, we pray. Lord, we pray for deliverance. We pray, Lord, that people who are being misled by false propaganda, that people who are being led into the paths of hatred and bitterness and led to think ill of people, Lord, deliverance, deliverance, and the grace, Lord, to be sanctified by the truth. And the grace for Christians to be able to recognise those Christians who are not sanctified by the truth. And by the way, I don't want anybody to come in. Well, you're, you're, you're pro-Putin. You're pro. I'm not pro-Putin. I'm not pro-Zelensky. I'm pro-peace. And all this could have been prevented with, dip, with diplomatic relations and rational minds. Dr. Taylor Marshall presents himself as a lover of peace. I'm sorry, Dr. Marshall, I have seen no signs whatsoever that you have a love for peace. It is certainly obvious that you have no love for the truth, and one cannot have peace without truth. And it's very easy for you to say that all this could have been solved by diplomatic relations. But I greatly doubt from what we've seen in this video and from what I've heard of your other videos that there's as much as a single Diplomatic bone in your entire body. Vita, he's destroying Ukrainian churches every day. A moral showman who danced in heels. He's not hiding his hate anymore. Agreed. I think he's just trolling us. I think this right here, he's just like, hey, I'm trolling you. I'm laughing in your face, you Christians. What are you going to do about it? I'm kind of wondering what Ukrainian people, here's, here's Campbell. He says, I can tell you that Ukrainian people are very religious. The Ukrainian Catholics are very devout and the Ca uh, Ukrainian Orthodox are very religious. What does this say to his own people, Zelensky, who are Christians, to the Catholic and Orthodox? He gives this as a gift. That's a slap in the face to the Pope. It's a slap in the face to Catholics, but it's a slap in the face to his people to he is jewish the majority of his people are christian and they have great love for the mother of god the theotokos and the christ child he's offending his own people this whole thing is out of control more hate speech let us recall that the painting the icon in question was painted by a leading Ukrainian artist who is almost certainly a Christian. And here we have Dr. Taylor Marshall going on an absolute rant because President Zelensky, a Jew, brought this painting, which was painted by, which was not painted by him, even though Dr. Taylor Marshall continues, 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 continues to imply that this painting was painted by President Zelensky. President Zelensky brought a painting that was painted by one of Ukrainian's top artists. He brought it as a gift to Pope Francis. Now at the beginning of his rant, Dr. Taylor Marshall, despite everything he has said about Pope Francis over the years, claims to be able to speak for how Pope Francis viewed the, the painting. Then he claims to speak for you and I, claims to speak for all Catholics, how all Catholics view this painting, and that includes you and I. And then he claims to speak for all Christians, how all Christians view this painting, and that includes again you and I. And now guess what? The man is actually claiming to be able to speak for the Ukrainian people. Dr. Taylor Marshall is claiming to be able to speak of how the Ukrainian people would have experienced this painting. Oh my God! Have you ever come across anybody so deluded? I have often said that to lead even one person to Jesus Christ is a greater achievement than winning an Olympic medal. Dr. Taylor Marshall has about half a million subscribers but what is he doing with them? 
Where is he leading them? Is he leading them to Jesus Christ? Is he leading them to the gospel? Or is he leading them into the, into the paths of prejudice and falsehoods and ill feeling? And what is that going to do? Now the Bible does tell us that there are some sins which are mortal and some sins which are not mortal. The Bible tells us that. And I'm not in a position to state whether uh, what Taylor Marshall is doing, whether it constitutes a mortal sin or a sin that's not mortal. And likewise for those who supported Dr. Taylor Marshall. I cannot say whether it constitutes a mortal sin in their case or a sin that is not mortal. But what I can say, and what I will say, not you, Dr. Taylor Marshall, not, not any one of your devotees are going to enter heaven without first having renounced what you are doing, without first having re renounced the lies and the falsehoods and the prejudice that you are building up. Not just you, but likewise your followers also. Not possible to enter heaven while those attitudes are still in your mind and in your heart. 